cue the roll call. Fuck. We're, We're live! live! <laughs> Watching all the anime, webcaster, show radio, equipment wielder, bluecaster, cheetah's zeal, loyal and lad, bluecaster, light red. From royal to ranger, orangecaster, noble. Broadcasting loud and opinionated perspectives across the internet. Radio Sentai Cast Ranger on air! Welcome to another episode of Radio Sentai Cast Ranger! Hi everybody! I got Q-Ranger stuff. It's awesome. Yes. Yes, he did. I'm wearing the Seiza Blaster right now. I got Q-Reno right beside me. I got I got the Q's a weapon. Well, I also got Juju Burger as well, and Juju Burger is a lot of fun. I also that got... was 100% necessary. <laughs> yep. I also got the uh, Gashet Gear Dual Beta, which I'm loving. Yep, it's it's a pretty sweet toy. I almost got one myself, and then I was like, eh, eh, I don't really need one. Eh, I'll let Ichi Beta it for me. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, whatever, I got the Gashet Gear Duels, so I'm happy with that one too. Joining us once again via the internet is our good friend Orange Caster Noble. Say hi. Hi. That, yes. was, that was a good hi. So Gar and Emily are not here because, like we said, next extra they went to go find the ghost movie subbed. It's been a long time coming, and they decided to go on an epic journey, so much like the rest of us have been when we've been playing Zelda: Breath of the Wild now on Nintendo Switch. By now, it has taken over our fucking lives. It really has. Like so, so I. I really don't know how to break this to Gar and Emily having gone on their epic journey, but I, I literally found the subtitle of that movie like an hour ago. Really? So... But they're already halfway to Egypt. Right? <laughs> Egypt? Like, like, yeah, I, I they don't, don't, don't have a deal know, while they're there. That's why I'm saying I don't Thank know how you. to break it to them. <laughs> like, it just, they didn't have to go anywhere. They just had to wait. They're going to go to Egypt. Gar's going to get punched into a water tower looking at a 7-up sign. Yeah. And then he's going to have to duel with his inner alter ego to release him. Emily's going to fight the scariest go. fucking bird you'll ever see in an anime. <laughs> Kill that bird! <laughs> no! It's you don't understand. There is this bird. You don't understand, man! And it's super scary. Uh, a dog fights it. It's a bird lane. They don't stand. They fly. I didn't say they stand, I said he has a stand. I love how Gar's cockyoing and Emily is Iggy for some reason. <laughs> Emily would be Iggy! I don't know who any of these are! <laughs> God. You're pulling her off. And I'm Joseph. Oh, shit! This is just heavily JoJo right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't watch JoJo. X8 section, go! All right. Um, we have yet another episode with no opening, and I don't know what's happening. No, 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 no. Before that, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna get into this right now. So, as everyone, you guys include, are all aware of, I changed my mind a shit fucking ton about who is my favorite what in anything. Yep. But I will say this right now: I am super fucking serious, and I'm putting my foot down about it too. Dave, are you listening? Listen to this, Dave. Kuroto Dan and slash Comrade Genmu is now officially and will be forever my favorite character slash writer in Kamen Rider x I promise you. Paradox was honestly more, just got was overly hyped for it, which that happens to me a lot because, you know, autism, woohoo. Just, just, just cue in the Spock voice. You now and forever will be my fave. But don't get me wrong. I still love Paradox. <laughs> He's fucking awesome. So... You're speaking in a paradox right now. I know. Um, but yes, so this this episode was like kind of sort of really Dan-focused. It seems like next week's episode is also going to be heavily Dan-focused. So, God, I fucking love this man so much. He's just so crazy and just so badass and just has the most fucking evil smile. Like, if he just keeps going the way he goes and he doesn't go away anytime soon... He, you, you say that seeing the preview for next week. I know. That worries, <laughs> that worries 
the shit out of me, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, but he might beat Ryoma, uh, Sengoku Ryoma, as my favorite villain writer, but we'll see, because Ryoma... Ryoma was fucking awesome, and he was fucking awesome. It's gonna be a cold day in hell before Ryoma I, gets dethroned, in my opinion. I mean, Dan's already way more crazy than Ryoma was, because, like, Ryoma wasn't crazy. He was just more like... I'm smart. He did it for I'm, the science. I'm super, super smart. No one's smarter than smarter than me. Ha 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 ha. Golden fruit. He had a better mental capacity. He was able to do all that shit and still seem like a suave motherfucker. Plus, he was way too obsessed with Coda by the end of the series. Everyone was. <laughs> um. Anyways, so that's why I'm honestly believing that Dan's gonna be the one to become Kamen Rider Chronicle because, like, although we have many different theories. On yeah, that. like Kevin said, like, oh, I feel like Palad's gonna be him, and I'm like, that no, because I, he gets perfect knockout. That's so, like, like, yes, that happens. But I like the idea that Pallad could be Comrade or Chrono, Chronos Chronicle, whatever it is. Chronicle. Because the whole build-up with his character so far has been he wants to play Comrade or Chronicle. Yeah. I feel like he should at least have a chance to do that. But then I feel like Dan's going to be Comrade or Chronicle just because he's like, I'm the only one who wants, I want to make the ultimate game, so he feels like he's the only one who deserves to wield the ultimate game. And my counter to that is, if it is him using the gadget, why isn't it Kamen Rider Genmu Chronicle Gamer instead of Kamen Rider Chronicle? Because he's it's that... It's a different power set, so it should be a different character. Because he's that much of a fucking prick, I don't know. He's just like, fuck it, Genmu's dead. Literally, <laughs> I'm, I'm crawling. Maybe. You also said that uh, Masamune might be him. I, which... also, I also really like the idea that Dan Masamune will take it and use it to reusurp his son back. Um, and actually, I would be just as happy if that happened too because I I just love the Dan family. They're they're a cool bunch of fucking dudes. Like, I'm also really curious to see who the new Genmu president is because they haven't talked about that. It's Gary. <laughs> I keep saying it's Garia. <laughs> now just imagine it's I've, Garia. I have mixed emotions about that. I don't know how to feel. You just you'll see him and you'll just be like, oh, but the flowers. No, it'll just be that moment from The Lion King where just like Simba walks up to Scar and Scar is like, Mufasa, no, you're dead. <laughs> so it's just gonna be or Garia has a twin brother or something. Who the fuck knows? Like. Kyrie was a batshit fucking liar, so he could have. He, we we barely knew anything about him. Yeah. That that's what that was the biggest mysterious uh, thing about yeah. his character. To me. Actually, that would be an interesting idea if it, if the new president is someone related to Kyria, through which we learn more about him. Yeah. Like, I'd like that. That'd be so cool. And then he gets to be laser. It, that or that or you know fucking. Toei has just become self-aware of the fact that everybody's looking at their shit. Like, hey, hey, let's post a picture of him getting his flowers. But, okay. <laughs> that would be so fucked. Right? Hey, let's, let's post a picture let's of him getting his... Let's fake out and give him the flowers. Let's, let's, let's give him his... <laughs> let's, let's fucking give, show, post a picture of him getting his flowers so everyone thinks he's... No, those were dead. his flowers for playing Kujo Kiria. Now he's, get, now, now he's playing an entirely new character. His twin brother. <laughs> exactly! Wouldn't that be awesome? I, you know, I would like to see that. Yeah. Like, um, psych! I, me all along. Okay, <laughs> so the main, real main focus of this episode that we found out is we found out the other thing that Kyria died for, finding out the, from his which dad. Is, which is, in truth, the only bit of information that Kyria was killed for, as we saw from Genmu being totally okay with telling Taiga about, you know, Emu's bugster. Dan discovered the bugster virus during the Y2K incident. And here's where we all start to feel real fucking old. When they use the Y2K bug as a basis for a long, long ago plot. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I actually vaguely remember my New Year's Eve for the year 2000. I, I drank champagne for the first time. I was 10 years old. And I saw these cool fireworks spiraling around the Eiffel Tower on TV. And it was fucking awesome. I'm sorry. Yeah, I remember... Autism! I remember grade 9. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Right, you're fucking old. Grandpa Raymond. Back Rayman. before you wore that hat all the Grandpa time. Grandpa Raymond, yeah. how was 2000 BC? BC? Sips his tea. <laughs> I have hot tea in my hand, Lane. I can splash it. <laughs> Don't make me reenact that Maker Studios sketch. Um, but yeah, so... 
Before we before we get into anything further, I want to bring up something interesting that I discovered. So, Officer Uesugi in this episode is actually a very commonly reoccurring guest star actor and Kamen Rider. I knew I recognized him, so I had to look him up. Uh, here's who he is. He is the ramen vendor in Kamen Rider Agito from episodes 11, 19, and 40. I remember that. Uh, he is a character named Tako Saburo from Kamen Rider Blade, episodes 29 and 30. Nope. And here's the one that really hit me. The Piano Man in Kamen Rider Deno. You know, uh, spoilers for a ten-year-old show, the one who got erased from his own timeline. Oh, right, that guy. Oh, yeah. Which is really funny because now he's under the care of the Deno Kume Center, yeah. Cyber Rescue. Detective of Grongi Countermeasures Team in, in Kamen Rider Decade. He was one of the cops in Decade's version of Kuga's World. Wow. Uh, in Kamen Rider Excel, he was Aoi Katsuragi's father. Uh, he was a character by the name of Shozo Matsuki in one of the two episode arcs in Kamen Rider Wizard, episodes 12 and 13. And, of course, he was Heiji Uesugi, as well as the Kaiden Bugster in Exaid of this week, episode 21. Can I just say, I loved how the uh, Kaiden Bugster, like, introduced himself. Like a samurai. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. That was all pretty standard fare for samurai characters. Right. Also, I forgot if it was Crunch or Noah, but one of them said, like... They hated his fucking head. It was me. His head looks stupid. It, it looks like he's wearing an apple. <laughs> it does. It's an apple with the space kind of. on it. Yeah, it is kind of an interesting take on the Praise whole the travel samurai to... wear. Hmm? But, I mean, I didn't have any major problems with it. He did have that whole back armor thing that the uh, Chambara Calabos Bugster had. So, it's definitely the same thing. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, so we, we also found out that, uh, Masamune, uh, Dan was not responsible for Zero Day or the Bugster virus or anything. Uh, Dan just... Framed him. Framed him, and so he could continue his work on creating Kamen Rider Chronicle, because he's like, I don't have time to be arrested before my game's finished. So... Yeah, so... Interesting. What an bugs, asshole. The Bugster virus came from the only computer that was actually affected by Y2K, discovered by Dan, and then he used it to cause Zero Day. Yep. Yep. And framed his daddy. Framed his daddy. What wow. A, what a bastard. But no, just... Dan, Dan was so fucking great this episode. Like, he was just, like, maniacally laughing, just, like, showing up at random places... Jumped off a fucking bridge right in front of Amu, and I'm Why? just like, holy shit. And dabbed while doing so, so that we wouldn't see it was a stunt actor's face. Right. And <laughs> Dan, Dan likes to dab. Oh, you know what really pissed me off this episode? Mm -hmm. Brave went full dragon twice, and we didn't get to see the henshin. And I'm gonna say this. Why? On everyone, uh, everyone we've seen full dragon, Brave... Literally knocks it out of the park. Like, because, full dragon brave looks really because awesome. Because it makes him, him a dragoon! It, it fits his motif perfectly. It yeah. makes him a dragon knight. Yes! Well, also, I think we're at the point where we just have to admit that Emu's just a fucking pansy when it comes to this shit. Because, obviously, like, Taiga and, uh, and Brave both did full dragon and, like, oh, yep, no issues. Yeah. We No drawback at all. Emu can't control full dragon. I feel like if we asked them, their excuse was once Eggzade tamed it, it wasn't a problem anymore. Yeah. But I but I agree that yours is also a possible theory. Yeah, Emu's just sucks. But yeah, now now <laughs> honestly, if I wanted a brave figure of any shape or form, honestly, brave full dragon I'd want to get because it it, I mean, it, it we, looked cool, it impressed me. I'm actually I agree with you, Ichi. That's stupid. We didn't get a fucking segment for him for his henshin. That was it, bullshit. Like it happens twice this episode, and we don't get it either time. Why? It, it was silly though. Every time we heard him like slash his sword, you just hear like a little dragon roar. I thought that was stupid. I liked just it. Hear, rawr, rawr. And then just credit to Genmu's suit actor for like. Awesome, just break dancing cho moves. No, but awesome <laughs> choreography. Like you saw, like Brave, like swing a sword at him, and you just saw him like just 
fucking dive back quickly and then like move back up like a fucking zombie would and it's just it's great and then it's just like the line where he's like i'm gonna claim your gadgets and snipes just like gee i was about to say the exact same thing and i'm just like ooh. and, and then and then genmu does bang bang critical finish with the sparrow just to be a dick yep and then he loses it it's like <laughs> snipe oh, gets it back oh you're gonna use bang bang critical hey guess what here's a bigger one I like how when Snipe uses Bang Bang Critical Fire, if you notice, the gauntlets that he's got are, sta- are normally upside down, but they, like, flip over so that the top of the battleship is, like, together in his yeah. hands when he fires. That's a really, really nice touch. It's like, ha I'm gonna use Bang Bang Critical Yeah, so am I. Mine's bigger. I'm gonna sink your fucking <laughs> battleship, bitch. Right? Th- th- thanks, Dan, for the great power-up. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly... Well, technically, he took it off Hero. Da- Hero was the one who took it off Dan. Yeah. But it just... Uh, Snipe, Snipe wields the Gacha Gear Dual Beta so well. Oh man, Simulations Gamer is such a broke ass form. It is. Like, he even beat, kicked Paradox's ass with it. Like, it was impressive. It was a tie, but he put up an amazing fight. No, and then, like, it was funny. They made, like, a game reference where it's like, you, you never try to, like, melee, use melee in a shooter because, <laughs> like, that just doesn't end well for you. Like, yeah. if you try. And then run- there's me. Yeah, if you try running at someone trying to melee them while they're shooting at you with a gun, you're gonna die. Like, gonna it's happened to me many times time. in Halo. It's way too many times in Halo. You're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, and then just, Pallad just clicks, uh, like, figures it out. He's like, oh, okay, I'll go perfect puzzle, and tries to fight him with that, but it's just, no. Um, let's see. So, we find out why Genmu has been getting his ass kicked and going back time and time again. Yep. He has been collecting more data on his own death to power up Dangerous Zombie. And this also explains why, in the text releases of the name, it's been described as level X and not just the number 10. Because apparently the forms that are labeled level X have a variable element in them where they can become stronger than the levels that they are set at. Well, what Pallad said was literally Gemu is working on something where the surpassing concept of surpassing the like levels the are irrelevant, levels. which yeah. I think is neat. Yep. But the problem is this happens in the episode, and then when he finally attains "quote unquote" level X, he poofs. Not even that. Just there's no visible change aside from the like extra smoke during his henshin. Well, yeah, no, because yeah, uh, it's still the same gadget. Yeah, it's just that. that he unlocked its full potential. It's just he just unlocked the full power of it. It didn't change what gadget it was. It I didn't know, but change I, the power. I, I feel like, like there should be at least a slight difference. Like Lane and I were talking about this. Like for example, the broken visor could be fully repaired. So I would have. I would have liked that. But think of it. It's like it's. Think of it as if you, like, 100%ed a game. Like, you just went to a game, got all the achievements for it, all the collectibles, and you just, like, fully... Oh my god, that's what this was! That's what it is! He fully completed Uh, the game, Well, I mean, most games, when you 100% it, you get something. Yeah, he... Exclusive skin, or something like that. If you watch the completionist, there's plenty of games that don't do that. Uh, I'm gonna give a congrats to Crunchman, because he uh, recently just... uh, 100% 100%ed Borderlands 2, which apparently took him two years, so... Jesus. Congratulations, Damn. Crunch. There's a fuck ton of content in that. Well, he spent, like, hours the other day, or apparently, like, doing the hardest one, where it was, like, finding some guy named Jimmy Jenkins or something. I don't know what that is, know. but... But, uh, going back to, uh, the cop, Mr. Uesugi, did anyone else laugh their face off when he just spilled off the side of the bed? Just, that a was, little. It was so unnecessarily comical. But I like, I like that he kept like he kept getting affected by the game disease like the whole episode because I'm like he's a cop. Cops are usually constantly under stress all the time. And here, the weird thing about that is they never showed what caused the infection. And because it first happens when he's talking to Dan Masamune, I think they were trying to possibly imply that Masamune can cause infections. Or maybe, or maybe he was just one of the people who was hit by the citywide spray of bugster that yeah. Dan was talking about earlier. Always possible. I like to think, I think so. Maybe it's, it's stress kind of the like interview was getting to him. Yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of like Dan Kuroto. Dan going is like, okay, this guy's investigating this shit. I don't want him investigating this shit. Oh, he's gonna go talk to my dad. Well, I'm gonna just. Uh, 
Just, so, just with the just go disease. salt bay on his ass with the books. Yeah, story. like he warns yeah. he warns them early in the episode, like don't fucking like uh, pry into like what I'm up to. Like it's not gonna be, it's not gonna end well for you. And then they do it anyways, and he's like, I fucking warned you, don't get involved. It's none of your concern what I'm up to. And just, but it was just, oh, Dan was just so great the entire episode. Like, he just, he's so crazy. And then, like, he, like, kicks Emu down onto the fucking ground and then, like, does this awesome, like, fucking Michael Jackson high kick. Like, the, like, yes, all the over. memes. All yeah, the memes. So, like, in fact, that's going to be our thumbnail. Yeah, our thumbnail is literally just going to be, like, the picture of Dan just doing that high kick and he's just going to have, like, Michael Jackson's, like, smooth criminal fedora on his head. Just, <laughs> <laughs> No, I have that picture on my phone. I'm keeping it. Like See, that's going in the memes folder. Like Shadowcaster, like gave me some sass on the like, Caster Andrew chat today, and I just replied with Sasscaster. Yeah, I replied with that picture of Dan kicking. And I was just like, <laughs> fuck you. Um, but I've also seen one of that where they uh, replaced his uh, belt with Keybat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I saw that. That's amazing. Wake up. Yep. Wait. Um, I wonder if I'm gonna look up if uh, Kiva Gamer is. Uh, can't move. Uh, I can't remember. I think it is. The other interesting thing that we learned from Uesugi is that his son was completely consumed by a bugster, which le immediately leads me to think, we haven't seen any other completed bugsters running around. We knew Graphite was born from Saki. Uh, the only other bugster we've seen. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to be the only other option there. No, uh, it's the no, Kiva Gamers that actually form. Yeah, I like to think that Eggs and Genmu allocations for the Legend Rider forms have, are, like, mostly way off point. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we'll talk about that later. Um, and yeah, so Emu and Poppy go and talk to Masamune, and I just imagine him just trudging out, and he's just like, God damn it! How many times do I have to tell my fucking life story to you people? I know. Emu. Everyone I talk to dies. No, but wait, he was in, he was okay with talking to Emu because like he. Oh, you're the protag. Sure, sit wait, your ass down no, and let me yeah, tell you a tale. Yeah, that that was an interesting point there when Emu introduced himself and he was like, "Wait, you're Emu," which relates to the, I know who you are. Which relates to the fact that at the start Patient of the show, zero. kinda yes, but also the fact that we learned that the reason that the CR sought Tensight Gamer M. At the start of the show... It's because Genmu told them to. Exactly. Um, but also, I liked, I liked that uh, Masamune has, like... He trusts Emu to dis defeat Dan. Like, he's like, can you... I like, you Can you stop my son? I like to think... My it, son is a little shit. <laughs> beat him up. He needs to be slapped silly. Here's I like to think on the flip side of that, because when they tell him Kyria was killed, Masamune is like, Oh, man, I had high hopes for that guy. And then he's like, okay, can you tell us what happened? Can you actually stop my son? Because I'm not explaining this shit a third time. Also, look at my fucking shitty mullet. <laughs> he's in prison. No, but they have prison barbers. It's a thing. Maybe he just doesn't give a fuck. Yes, they have he misses barbers. the 80s. Leave him alone. It's called fucking rape and buzz cut. Yeah. Just take no, but then you see him in the past when, like, he's, like, the president of Game and I saw his hair there, and I'm like, that's perfect! Why do you have this shitty mullet? Like, now! Come on! God damn. Um, so... It was Stallone week in the prison movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> so, any of you remember a while back when we first met Sukuru, and I said, you know, it'd be great if they just kept him on and had him, like, make more gashets for them? Taiga went for it! Yeah, because, that's happening. No, because Nico was just like, gee, it's if only we could make something that could defeat a zombie! Hmm, as she's sliding down a slide, and just, Taiga's just like, an eye for an eye, game for a game. And I'm like, thank you, someone is finally doing some meta thinking also, in this also, game. It just took Nico sitting there like, Oh, hey, wouldn't it be wonderful if we had somebody capable of making new gadgets also, who could make something specifically designed for the task we have at hand? Also, <laughs> also Sakura's rocking a sweet-ass grieving beard, as I like to call it. And was promptly nutshotted by Nico. Yeah. But yeah, Tiger's just like, money's no option, just name how much you need and make my gadget, please, now. I love Kickstarter. How I love how you were questioning why Taiga has all that money. No, because, like, 
Yeah, okay, you made a fair point. Like, there are some people who will go to an unlicensed doctor because some real nope. doctors will be like, uh, no, I will not do that for you. Uh, rich people, Yakuza members who got fucking injured in some sort of gang warfare that yeah. can't go to an actual hospital. I mean, I've watched Michael Bay's The Island, so I should just be like, yeah, no, because they did illegal shit, because millionaires, thing. Mi rich people yeah. paid for clones. You know who he is? Huh? Hi, everybody! Hi, Dr. Tiger. Right? Oh, my God. <laughs> I just ruined Tiger for everyone listening! <laughs> the fact that you're not wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to go back into my corner and keep comparing him to Black. No! Okay. I know. Now I just, I realized something. This is the second time that Tiger has, like, bought his way to, like, fucking win at something. He... He, he, gave, he, gave, he gave Dan a ton of fucking money to give him a gamer driver and a gashet and then just paid a game developer to make a gashet that'll defeat Genmu. He's one of those freemium gamers who just buys all the <laughs> Exactly! <laughs> He's just like, pay to win! Pay to win! <laughs> <laughs> Buy all the premium currency! No, and you I... know what? Like, you should, you think I'd be pissed off about what Tiger's doing, but no! It's totally in his character! He doesn't give a shit! He's the character who has nothing! He wants to be the only common writer, and he'll do whatever the fuck it takes to goddamn win! Tyga is wrestling really fucking hard to steal my favorite character spot. Well, Tyga, Tyga is, like, my third favorite character in this show, so he's... He's, He's quite definitely badass. gotten back up the charts for me. No, I know. Like, I thought Nico, having Nico around would kind of, like, ruin his character, but no. He's kind of just like, fuck you, but she's just, she's actually been a fun tag-along for him, so. Yeah. Um, so oh. during the, the fight at the near the end of the episode, we see something I've been looking forward to. Uh, the key slasher not only accepts double gashets, but two regular gashets. So we get to see uh, Exade use Action Robot's critical finish. And then, yeah, Gamu does, like, this cool, like, back-dancing, like, spin move, and then just, like, bleh. He just, like, tornado kicks his way back to his feet. Yeah, so, like, again, like, credit to the suit actor's choreography. It was just, it was beautiful. Yeah. And uh, we see Brave, while fighting in uh, Full Dragon again, actually use a muscle metal. So everyone is getting a little bit of development. Muscle And, and uh, just... As I mentioned, because it's probably going to be important next week, mm -hmm. when he was going level X, mm -hmm. the th what what I saw when uh, Danger Zombie was like upgrading the extra. Smoke, oh, the little glitch. That also that, but also just that incredibly big cloud of like dark energy. The same thing that happened to Emu when he fucking created uh, oh, yeah. Double yes. X. Which I wanted to get into. Gigantic fucking dose of Bugster. Exactly. Also which... it awakened the one that's already inside him because he had to have the compatibility Exactly. Service. So I feel like Dan has a Bugster inside him which, which means... It, which makes sense considering the preview for next week is him in a in hospital gown in CR yep, going about how he doesn't want to die. I'm gonna really Really like this episode. We got oh. ding all damn problem over here. Gamu's going nuts. <laughs> yep, I'm looking. I've been looking forward. I've been enjoying all of Dan's crazy godly rants, which yep. is just making me look forward more and more to his fall from grace. No, like I'm, I am going I'm, to be smiling from ear to ear, watching him plead for his fucking <laughs> life. No, and judging from the preview, like. Poppy's just like, no, fucking let him die or whatever like that. But obviously, it's Emu... Just, it's gonna be this some Persona 4 throw Namatame in the TV bullshit. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Really no, but like, Emu's... But Emu being Emu is just gonna be like, no, he's he's a patient, he needs to be cured. Like, no matter what. Um, like, fuck. Something interesting to note is, uh, in this episode, Dan finally explains Comrade Chronicle to our protagonists. Yep. And we get to see a, a enemy roster display on the little hologram from the bug visor, which includes uh, separate paradox forms as separate enemy enemy characters, both yep. of his forms. Uh, Gutton from Kikitotsu Robots, Vernier from Jet Combat, Kaiden from Giri Chambra, Salty from Mighty Action X, Alhambra from Tattle Quest, Revolve from Bang Bang Shooting, and Motors from Boxo Bike, confirming that the only ones left to spawn and gather the data for are the Bugsters from Dragonite Hunter, Shakariki Sports, which we're going to see next week, or the week after, I believe. And here's where some people have been throwing around some theories. Dora Mifa Beat. 
Yeah. We, we have not seen a bugster from that game. Poppy. Except for Poppy. That. I want to just bring up one thing for that. They did show... Didn't they show silhouettes of the other three? No, they were question marks. They were just question marks? Okay, I thought I was seeing Wait, something. Wait, no. Wasn't that Bugster, like, the one where Dormy for B, like, debuted? Wasn't no, that no, that Bugster? was a collabless Bugster. And, oh. and they're, like, blank Bugsters that you plug a gash in and you get the powers up. They weren't okay. from the actual game data. No, yeah, so... It just... Poppy's gonna be reprogrammed to be evil. Like, it's... That, that's it. Like, it has to be. Like... Everyone's saying that's what it's going to be. Poppy's going to be brainwashed or reprogrammed and to fight uh, alongside Kamen Rider Chronicle, and that, that's why she has a Buggle Driver too. So. Maybe. Honestly, you know what it might be? Hmm? It might be there's only one. Oh, and she drivers. can steal it. No. Maybe. He, he, no. Whoever's Kamen Rider Chronicle is going to give it to her first to use it so that maybe ha the belt will have something where if a bugster is defeated when it's using it, it automatically gets absorbed into it. Oh, maybe. Or maybe Comrade Poppy's just going to be like a test dummy to see how the Buggle Driver 2 functions as a belt. I could see that. Maybe. I could see that. Well, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. And also, apparently, the gamer, Emu's gamer driver gets fucking torched. Do, do we know if that's Emu's? Because it could have been any of them. I, I don't know. I, 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 thought, I, I thought it might be Dan's because, you know, this is his fall episode. Yeah. But why would he, he has, need his Yeah, why would gamer he have his gamer driver, driver though, when he has his bugle driver? Which is a good excuse for it to be destroyed. I guess. Well, we'll see. Maybe, I, but the person that was falling off of looked kind of looked like they had a doctor's coat. I hope oh, this okay, well, we'll I see. hope this isn't the end to Dan, because A, we haven't got, seen a picture of him getting, receiving his flowers, so I think it's still going to be a thing. Because he needs to finish his Chronicle. He still needs to finish it. Well, we already know, for, we already know that Chronicle is going to happen, so... Yeah, yeah. But, uh, oh, just, Dan, you're, you're fucking awesome. You're my favorite character. Oh, you know what it's so gonna much. be? Huh? Mm -hmm. It's gonna be Amu's gamer driver, so he has to use... Kyria's. Kyria's. Oh. And then when Paradox gets his gamer driver, it's gonna be Dan's. I, yeah, I like... Because he's just gonna steal it. Because it's like, right. oh, you haven't finished the uh, Chronicle yet, so I'm taking... You're not using you this. Know. No, well, you're... You know what? Actually, you've had a history on the show of like predicting shit too when you're on. So, I mean, you're, you're probably right. You know, I, I mean, my original uh, joke name for the one episode of Silver Metal I was on was like Spoiler Caster. So, <laughs> who knows? You yeah. You know, I have to say, I really like the discussion we're having on Exaid this time. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's fucking fascinating. I love it. Also, with uh, laser level fit or not laser. Laser level 50 would be nice, though. Uh, <laughs> snipe level reason. 50. I'm really disappointed they didn't make his chest piece look like a suit, like the guy in the gachat. Oh, yeah. Like how on Bang Bang he has, like, the little cloak and everything. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. That would have been a cute little touch to have, like, the little suit and tie. Yeah, have, like, an admiral uniform chest piece. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, um, and then pretty much the last thing they mentioned in the episode is there's a funny scene where Poppy eats Hero's cake. Yes, that was quite a shocker. <laughs> and Hero, and Hero was like, are for a <laughs> <laughs> "How could this happen to me?" Uh, no, what's the what's the other joke I fucking like? Oh yeah, your fr uh, your friends ask you if you're fine, but you're not really fine. <laughs> I love that one. All right, moving on to Q Ranger. Wait, I got the. All right. <laughs> so Raptor does the recap this episode because it's the Raptor episode. Raptor, Raptor, you guys. Yep. I I I make a joke, but I actually. This, this episode really, really brought forth the other side of her personality that we have not seen before now. Yeah, the non-bitchy teacher side. Yeah, that. This episode, it's really easy to forget that it's Gokai Yellow doing that voice. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That shows how really good at voice acting she is. Um, she could be an Akiba Ranger with the level of self-delusion she exhibits this whole episode. So, I... 
I think Emily has another character she can relate to in Sentai. Yeah. Because, like, Emily, if you're listening to this, which I'm assuming you are, I'm assuming you have a lot of, like, fantasies and, you know, dreams and stuff that you have, which, that's really cool. I mean, I imagine shit all the fucking time. Like, I do I'm it kinda, at work. I'm kind of really, really sad she's not here for this episode. No, me too. Yeah, we miss you, Emily. Um... But yeah, so that, that's cool if you if uh, you relate to Raptor as well. So like two two Sentai's in a row, you have a character you relate to. That's fucking awesome. Oh yeah. So with this episode, hey, remember before this show even started, we were like, man, I kind of wish they never go to Earth. You fucking did it, Joe. Ah! You fucking did. Fuck Not me. only did we episode go to Earth. Episode four. No. Not only do they get to go to Earth. But they oh, have hey. they have a reason to fucking stay there for a while. Oh, hey, it looks like we'll be here for a oh, they, while. Oh, there's governors. There, 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 there's here. governors everywhere. Oh, and there's a super special secret about Earth that the uh, Donna oh, Margie doesn't want them knowing about. Going on. Oh, so about that here. secret. Uh, uh, about that secret, I have a theory. Oh, theory caster, noble. You know how in uh, the first Thor movie, before Thor drops down and gets tased, they look mm-hmm. up into the sky and they go, "Oh, these aren't the con- these aren't our constellations. Mm-hmm. All of the constellations that the Q Rangers are are only constellations you could, in theory, see from Earth. Oh, okay. So what if the whole Q Ranger power and everything about the uh, what you call it? The uh, constellations originates from Earth. So you're saying the Earth is the source of the Q energy? Oh yeah. no wonder! Because they even made a mention in the episode. It's like, oh, our Q power is limited, so we can't use it all. It's not infinite. Uh, right. The and because with, the other you thing only... with that is, and uh, Sholanpo even fourth walls us a little bit is. <laughs> See. We were all psyched when we heard this was going to be a show with nine rangers, but this is the episode where it puts forth the idea that, hold, hold, hold your horses, yes we have nine rangers, but they're not always going to be all fighting at once. We're only going to send down five at a time. No, but then next week we're going to see all nine it's of them totally together. not for budget reasons. He actually looks to the camera and says, it costs too much. And then Raptor digs into, oh, yeah, yeah, it costs too much Q energy. You know, the thing that powers us, totally. It's really a thing. Right? <laughs> God Too much damn. Q energy is, is powerful. <laughs> Too dangerous. <laughs> Fucking fuck. And then... Probably what was personally for me my favorite part of this entire fucking episode. They're just like, alright... Hey, everyone, put your Kitama in this little roulette thing, and now I'm going to fucking dance and do this little song before I, uh... The Q-Let. Yeah, Premium Bandai q Coming this... Yeah, Premium Bandai q Won't scratch your Q-Tamas, we promise. Oh my god. It's it's stupid, and it's for a full fourth wall reason, and it's ridiculous... But God, why? How did they produce another just as catchy song? Right? It's so fucking great, and I just love Lompo's dancing. It's a fucking awesome. I love Lompo so God much. Damn it. I liked Raptor's sarcastic clapping in the on the side. Just yeah. Yeah. And even even yeah. Champ even Champ at the end is just like, why did you have to dance? <laughs> you know, like like even after the whole thing is decided, and it's just like. I still don't understand why we're being split up, and everyone just ignores him. <laughs> also, Ichi liked that Lampo has goggles. Oh my god, that was amazing. Just like, okay, we're gonna warp now. What? Just L- Lampo just straps on these <laughs> sick-ass golden goggles. Hold on to your seats, kids! <laughs> we don't have seats! Just Raptor so, and, just and him Hold on to something. Where we're going, we don't need roads. And they just get flung around in zero-G through the warp. It's hilarious. And of course, I mean, you guys didn't need war. Didn't need a warning, right? And of course, the <laughs> only the uh, fucking first five that get to go to Earth are the you know the first, first five, the, the quote unquote first core five. Like, and you know what's funny? Like the first one that uh, the first Kutana comes out is Lucky's, and he's just like, "Yeah, Yoshi Lucky," and I'm just like, "Yeah, I 
Lucky's gonna be on the T way team every single time. Yeah, I can see he him wouldn't because he wouldn't be so lucky if he didn't win. Mm. Yeah, even at the beginning of this episode, like Raptors fantasizing whatever, like mm. of like, and you just see Lucky going like, "Oh man, this is very unlucky. We're getting defeated," and that's how I instantly knew this was a dream because I was like, "Yeah, no, Lucky is not un- has ne- will never have an unlucky moment. Plus, never. plus it was like mid fight at the start of the episode. That's kind of a flag, exactly. So I'm just like bullshit. And then we just see Raptor come in, do like her own little Sentai explosion and pose, and I'm like. Oh yeah, this is fucking. And she's dream. flying around and doing punches at like rocket speed, and I'm like, oh, this is an Akiba Ranger thing. But no, we <laughs> we really get into like Raptor's character, and it's interesting. So we find out that like she was only built and programmed to do two things: pilot the ship and be a secretary. And she honestly did. She's gone beyond her programming. Like she's learned to like dream and just like want to do more with herself and that that's really good character especially like and the really tra- this early in the show and the really tragic part of that is the fact that she has those dreams she thinks she's broken that she's defective and i'm and, like no and, oh, that yeah. really... no even me i'm just like i'm like no you're not like think of it it's like it's like data from star trek the next generation like he's an android but all he wants to be is not be human, but just be more like a human. So yeah. he wants to be able to emote and do shit humans do. And it's just, it's great. It's really relatable. So, like, good on you, Raptor. So Raptor doesn't get sent with the core team, but she does get sent down to Earth with them. To go find Peaches. Because Sholan Po wants to have canned peaches. Not even... No, no, no. no. He asked he for want, peaches. He wanted peaches. She just got him canned peaches. Because oh, yeah. he was sick of you know, out of spite. looking for that shit. Yeah. Out, well, out of spite, because they don't have a can opener. Yep. <laughs> Quit transform. I need to use your face. Uh, but yeah. Speaking of Spada's face... Uh, did you see the, uh, the, yes. the Henshin tutorial yes, YouTube video? Yes, I did. Oh my god. god. So Raptor has a fantasy where she and Spada are, like, fighting together, and this is where this really, really supports the brand new Spada X Raptor ship. Yeah. Because, like, they look like they're about to kiss, but then... I mean, this, this episode did kind of show he's a little... Overly, overly concerned. Protective. protective yeah. Her. Which is really gonna fuck everyone who was thinking Spada X Hammy. Oh god, he is Sanji! Because <laughs> in One Piece, Sanji has the hots for both Nami and Robin. And he just, he does, he doesn't care which one he'd get. But the, the funny part about the, the, YouTube, the YouTube special is that, like, Washi Pink and Kajiki Yellow are, like, leaning in to try and kiss each other. But then Washi Pink's. Or they stop because Kajiki Yellow's sword nose just like pokes her in the face. And the only and reason I'm the sitting sword there face. the whole time just like, but come on, that's the best way to do it because that'll fill a hole in her face. That's what I was gonna say. No, but my favorite part of the entire thing God. was like, sorry, sorry, hold on, just, just that, a- that moment when you remember that yes, Raptor has a tiny little hole where its nose should be, and I'm just like, and- oh, that's gonna fulfill some weird kinks. Yeah, right. No, but my- I'm just sitting there the whole time. Like, that's what's bugged me about her design the entire show <laughs> so far. It's She's got this little hole where the nose should be. Like, somebody was originally planning to put a fucking Mr. Potato Head nose in there. <laughs> and just fucking, here we go. She doesn't look finished. Right? <laughs> no, but... They're gonna favorite- put a nice big red clown nose there. No, right, <laughs> I, yeah, even then, or, do it. or a beak, because she's like washy. But no, my favorite thing about the transformation special was honestly like afterwards, like she accidentally like has her cake and she goes to eat, but she like trips or something and it falls no, somewhere. She, she's freaking out because yeah. she was in the middle yeah. of uh, fantasizing and, and he actually came up and started talking to her. And then yeah. she's looking for a cake, and then you just see it's on, right on, fell on Spada's face, and he's just like. Raptor, don't And then just Why? like she's freaking out. You and then, ruined my cake! I and hate and you! The part that just made me laugh. And the best part, that's, that's, if you actually watch the episode, that's the cake he made at the end of the episode. Yeah, yep. but just what's super funny was, you just see yeah, Lucky and, and you just see Lucky and Naga just like watching them from like, uh, from like afar. And just Lucky turns and just goes, hee <laughs> and he just eats his cake. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, and I'm like, and I'm like, hey, Lucky, you've made, uh, you're more relatable to me now, because that's exactly what I would do. I'd just see shit going on, and I would just secretly be like, 
<laughs> That's funny. One thing I really noticed that I hope we see more of is when Raptor first gets told, yeah, you have to go down there with them, and she starts fantasizing about what it could be. It's you great. start seeing the gauges on her head just, like, start going up, yeah. and I'm like, oh my god, does she have a arousal gauge of some sort? No, it's horny, just, a, a horny no, meter. No, it's, horny fucking, meter. it's a fucking overheat gauge. Maybe. And, and it was just great, like, spots, Which is like, really weird when you remember that she has two on her little, like, the hair things hair. that are hanging over her breasts. Right. <laughs> What is it with Toei and making robots look like sex droids? Which is it's which is funny when we can again bring this back to a Kiba Ranger because Nobuo had a fetish for shiny robot girls. Yeah, that's my favorite episode of the Kiba Ranger. <laughs> they just they made a robot specifically designed to just fuck with the Kiba Red. To just make him unfocused. But, they yeah. designed to literally fuck but with then Kachiki just, Yellow. I love that this like spot is like, oh yeah. Raptor, are you okay? Is there a problem? Nothing. Just yeah, me, I love how she like holds her glasses like they're possible to be adjusted. And she's like, nothing. Nothing's wrong. Nothing is, nothing is wrong. I am fine. But yeah, I'm so they go to Earth and Jesus, did they get fucked over? It looks like Helheim took over. Yeah. Right? By the way, once again, good fucking job, Zoogers. Hashtag good job, Zoogers. Zoogers. Yeah. They're, they're Hasht- on vacation. Hashtag good fucking job. Every Sentai that may or may yeah. not still be active. Yeah. No, no, but like, this makes you really think. Like, like cough, is this cough. an alternate universe? Oh. But it can't be because they're going to have a Cure Ranger Zoocha movie. I was about cough. to say, how the fuck is that going to work? Cough, cough, good job, Decker Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what's going to be the real question? Mm-hmm. What's going on with X8? Yeah. Right? How are we crossing over if Earth is fucked? Oh, fuck. Wow. There's just this one little city that everyone just has this weird disease. Everywhere yeah. else is fucked. No! That's no! Fucked. It's because of the Fugster they virus. They quarantined it! Shark matter is just staying everywhere away from <laughs> that. Yes! They have quarantined that city and no one in that city is aware of any of the shit going on. Yes! I love it! Oh, my we'll God. We'll see in a couple weeks! <laughs> right? Um... The Daikon for this week is a giant uh, penis face taper, completely in pink, eating dreams, named Yume Pakun. Yeah, I mean, I like pink things, but goddamn, the monster monster was ugly, and his voice was annoying, too. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna eat you! I I feel like when when this gets adapted into Power Rangers... We'll just skip that one. He's gonna have a Barney voice. Oh, God. Yeah. Like, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, Your dream looks really tasty. (laughs) Uh-huh. (laughs) <laughs> so he really, so like he steals children's dreams and makes them, I guess, catatonic or something like that. No, no, they're still know. they're still conscious. They just have no dreams or willpower. And it was actually interesting. Like later, we find out like they're like the Kiwi just came to help, and just like the humans are like, no, you're you resisting is making it worse. We don't need your fucking help. We were fine before you came here. It's not like anybody's dying. Yeah, we're not dying. Yeah. And then just Lucky just goes on this tangent, being like, no, if you don't have any fucking dreams, you might as well be dead. You might as well be fucking dead. Which and is, which is kind of harsh, I think. No, but. Honestly, Lucky has an interesting way of thinking, and I... Oh, by the, I, I by the way, it. let's go ahead and officially update the Lucky counter. There were only three this episode, bringing the counter up to 24 total for the four episodes. Wow, so he's... He's scaling back because he's not the focus. Um, no, and also we learned that, like, uh, Lucky was, like, trying to talk to Raptor because, like, he found out, like, what her dream was, and he's just like, no, that's really cool, I'll try to help you with it, and... It's like, oh yeah, it's like, you know, I, I, uh, I'm living because of my dreams, and she's like, oh yeah, to see the end of the universe? Uh, that was it before, now it's to help you guys defeat Dark Matter. That's like, a side quest, I have a new main quest, right? <laughs> no, but that's, that's cool, because it goes back to his, for one of his first moments in episode one, where he's like, I want to be with these guys, fuck it! <laughs> so, yep. that's cool. Um, so we learned- Uh, w- wait, what was that space game that everyone hates? Space game. That just came out recently. No, Man, no Man's Sky? Sky? Yeah. I was playing No Man's Sky, now I'm playing Mass Effect. <laughs> right? I heard Mass Effect Andromeda has, like, a hundred, over a hundred worlds that are, like, specifically created to be each, each, each different, so... 
fuck, I can't words tonight. Yeah. Um, At least but yeah. it's better than the shit driving missions in the fucking original game. Yeah. Fuck you! I yeah. love the Mako! Here's the, the Tempest thing. will be just as I, cool! I, I saw a video of the driving in Andromeda. It looks vastly improved. Yeah. Anyways, so we find out the reason that Raptor's full name is Raptor 283. It's not just because of the Tsubasa pun. Apparently that's also her model number. So well, she was yeah. the 283rd. Which, yeah, I was <laughs> gonna say, are we gonna see other raptors? Because I'd like that. And Orion's her uncle, apparently. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Yeah. Orion. And, he, Orion. and apparently he's also a Pokemon because he only knows how to say his name. Yes. Technically, he says Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, yeah. uh, they go to the curry shop, which. I swear to God, that's the same one from Gokai. I'm almost sure you're correct. On Someone that has one. to confirm I on that. I sat there like that looks familiar as fuck. That set. Yeah. Just no. It, it, it's just tradition. All of the space Sentai need to show up to that curry shop and just eat there. Yeah. Has Decoranger done that? I don't know. Probably. I haven't I seen that. that. See, this that's is why wrong. we are. This is why we need Gar here. Yeah. God damn it. Um, Gar, send a message from the future. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so we get, um, so when, like, Raptor finally, like, decides to be like, no, I want to fight and live my dream, we just get this really cool shot of just, like, the other, like, four Q-Rangers just, like, finishing off the mooks and just, do like, nodding. posing. And nodding. And nodding, and I'm just like, that's so cool. By the way, apparently the Seiza Blasters are also fucking communicators, because why the fuck not? Multi-purpose bullshit. Seiza Blaster to Ryan, Seiza Blaster hey, to Ryan. Hey, hey, if the shift brace can also be a watch... Yeah. Oh shit, I'm late! <laughs> oh shit, I'm late. What? Where's the display on that? <laughs> Crim thought of everything. Um, but yes, it, it was really actually, it really put a huge smile on my face seeing like Raptor like so in just awe that like she had her own Q-Tama. Like she was not expecting it and it was really cool. And, and again, this is another one that just got like willed into existence which really... Really has me wondering where the fuck Garus came from. It's because he they had a lot of uh you know what Garu Garus was probably his dad's. Maybe. And when his dad died he took it off of his corpse as like a memorabilia thing, like I'll always remember you as I run away like the little bitch I am. <laughs> that, that's no we're that's eventually gonna be explained. Like lucky yeah. or someone's gonna be like, gee, Garu, how did your Kutama like come to Form and and I, I'm well. also looking forward to uh, us seeing the backstories on how Spada, Hami, and Champ got theirs. Mm -hmm. Hami just laughed at space really loudly. <laughs> <laughs> just I mean, Champ, uh, Champ got his Kutama immediately after, like it he was, was a, screaming because his creator got just no, killed. It was a prize for Robo Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just this lovely Kutama. Yeah, this like, lovely desk ornament. No, it's like in One Piece when uh, Luffy went to uh, dress Rosa, and he went to a fighting tournament because he found out that the prize to, for winning the tournament was Ace's Devil Fruit. Oh, and he like wanted to win that no matter what because he would die before he had anyone else touch that fruit. So we get to see the debut of Speed Star Washi Pink and. The wings appear mid-engine, and it's gorgeous! Yeah, and in terms of skill, she's pretty fucking good. She flies at amazing speed with an instant masterful skill. She dual-wields the blaster on the Seiza blaster and the Q-shot on the other hand, which is way more amazing than I was expecting. And I'm gonna mention, I know the Q-shot is, like, the most, like, fucking, like, generic weapon out of all nine form modes. Because but, it's just the handle. Yeah. But I love the Q shot. I think it's fucking cool. I think Washi Pink it's, is definitely it, has has a chance at becoming my favorite pink it's ranger. It's very cool. Get out. Okay, bye. Hmm. Um, yes, and we also get to see the first use of the Q buckle. Uh, and we get to see the Cancer and uh, Telescopium q Thomas get used okay. for op with obvious purposes. Yeah, cancer one was fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Giant yeah, I like Cancer it. Balance attack! A.K.A. A A A A we had fucking uh, Balance and Naga stay up on the ship to, to, rig up re the to, ri to rig up a copy of the belts from Gokaiser. Yeah. It's it's the key road. Yeah. It's yeah, it's fun. just like, hey, uh, if you press this button on your belt, you can get one of the other q Thomas. Right? Really? Let's test your looks. Yeah, don't, don't question it. It's part of the budget. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, 
So, uh, uh, Yume Pakun gets in his Mori Mars Robo, and he, something funny happened. Like, all six of them, like, line up and, like, summon their Zords, but then, like, green, even though Hami summoned hers, it doesn't come because they only need five to make the Mega Zords. Yeah. <laughs> she just, I assume, because we never see her the rest of the shot, is just standing there by herself. And she went back to the ship. Yep. Yeah. All right, I'll just leave now, okay? Yeah. That chameleon's useless anyway. <laughs> no, it honestly is, which is why, like, two weeks from now, I'm buying Washi Voyager to replace Chameleon Voyager, because... Fuck... Fuck yeah. Chameleon. Chameleon Zord's silly. <laughs> I, I admit... And gets its tongue ripped look, out on the look, regular. Look at this! Like, sure, cool, the tongue pops out, but, like, look where the cute... It's, it's sticking out of its butt! <laughs> No, it is its butt. Yes! Anyways. Sorry. So, God, I hate Hammy. So, Hammy's a butt? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, when they formed Kureno, someone on the Facebook group noticed a little error. When they when the, the, the Qtama cockpits all light up, uh, Yellow's lights up with actually the Gold Ranger's emblem, the Libra, the Tenbin emblem, yeah, instead Tenbin. of his own. I damn it. I'm like, that's kind of a weird oversight. Uh, I mean, it's not the first time to always made fucking mistakes in their shows. And then we get the best thing ever that Washi Pink does. She makes a Sailor Moon reference. Yep. The name of Aquila, I will punish you. Don't use that dub. Sorry, that's up. Washi. Whatever. In the name of the Washi Galaxy, I will punish you. There you go. It's amazing. And then, uh... I was thinking that whole th that whole fight, like, the way Washi Voyager looks as an arm, I'm like, you know, that thing would be cool if they used it as a bow, and then they used Meteor Break, and the wings actually flipped around, and they shot it so yeah. uh, like an arrow. And I'm like, that's awesome! Thank you! Jeez, you're right, Ichi. Like, you, you do love the Pink Ranger for this show. That's fucked up. Yeah. And you like blue. I do like blue, but it's I... It's weird. Uh, but pretty much by this point, I think Lucky's my favorite character, so... But I love I love Garu as well. That hasn't changed. Um, so, during... I took a couple screenshots during this episode because there's several times where we get to see uh, Raptor's journal of like where she's writing down her delusions. So I'm going to go ahead and read these. Uh, the one from the start of the episode says... War... war Warning, uh, contains heavy anguish. Yeah. Cure Ranger, which isn't a match for the offensive of Jerk Matter, Raptor 283. It was a secret that I'm strong for everyone wasn't. It lucky. Every drone disappearance, match is destroyed. I defend Space Peace! <laughs> and then the one at the end of the episode... A little draw with a little drawing of all of them in her uh, new form as well. Give me a sec to zoom in on that. The great uh, brain and winning I, again. I, I, now I, I leave for no reason. It could be Q Ranger. It be Q Ranger Eagle Pink. Pers uh, in person, Q Tama responded. It's the importance a dream is believed, isn't it? It's very painful to run after a dream, but if I'm with everyone, a dream comes true. If Anthony put it in the screenshots. <laughs> she put herself at the center. What a fucking I love bitch. the pose she drew herself in. Yeah. And everyone else is just hanging around like, yeah, what the hell? Yeah, no, we're, we're here. We're the fucking giant little bumps on Chameleon Green. <laughs> That's so adorable. I feel like an actual child drew those. Probably. <laughs> no, no, no. They just told the suit actor to draw it while, they, while wearing the gloves. <laughs> there you go. Oh my god. Um, so, uh, next week uh, apparently focuses more on Aerodron. We get to meet Big Brother Scorpio. All nine Q Rangers assemble. And I noticed something that may or may not be a thing. Uh, we see in the preview a couple shots of a kid defending another kid who is wearing a very light blue vest. Ooh. Possibly yeah, Koguma Sky Blue, since he was supposedly Orange's partner? Yeah, maybe. There you go. That's quick. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Alright. We will quote Space Jam for all eternity. Don't bring me anymore, right? Don't bring me anymore, right? Alright. 
Bam, 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 feature topic. Feature topic. Our feature topic for this week is a shorty but a goody. It's episode two of the Kamen Rider Genmu Legend Rider specials. And this one was fun! Uh, yeah, if you're a big fan of video games, you'll fucking love this th this episode. It's great. So it starts where the last one left off, where quote-unquote Dr. Pac-Man is there with the Namco gadgets. But supposedly he died in the movie because everyone's like, Oh, you're dead, I'll just have to kill you again. Well, I, I think they're leading up to be that it's someone else posing as Dr. Pac-Man this don't, time. Don't kill me anymore, right? <laughs> it's Carrier. It's scary! <laughs> <laughs> no, the guy who was Dr. No, Pac-Man see, because all, all the games that he's giving everyone, they're just old, old, dead games, you know? Pac-Man's not dead. I mean... I still play Pac-Man to this very day. So I know, it was it was more just for the joke. I know. Yeah. So, Genmu and his spawned rider clones of Double O's and Forze meet up with our protags in the tunnel... And then we are quickly introduced to Exade, Adventure Action Gamer Level 3, Brave Famista Quest Gamer Level 3, and Snipe Zevia Shooting Gamer Level 3. Okay. Zevia Shooting Gamer is everything I hoped it would be. Yeah, you, It is the perfection of that design. You fucking love that form so much. I love Pack it, Adventure. It's just... It, it's, it's great. Like, I love his fists. I love that, like... On the side of his helmet, he's just got, like, two Pac-Mans. It's a fucking repurposed Gekitotsu robot. Who cares? They're, they're all repurposed, but they're all slightly different in their models. They're not just straight-up recolors. Yeah, Pac-Man's got the fists. Uh, Famista has baseballs in the speaker emblems and a glove. And Zevius, the chest piece for the... Sh for the, sh the I'm just sitting here. You say it has fists. Gekitotsu robots had fists. It only it had one well fist, won. and it was a bigger this fist. This one had kind of like the O's kangaroo metal That's fist. what I thought they were, but no, they, they're, they're they actually aren't. not. No, they're different. They're original fists. That's what I thought. Oh, and that uh, thing we were talking about earlier during Extra Extra, I sent in the Discord chat. Okay. Um, I, I just found it. Yeah. And then the Snipe Zevius form, the, the design of the, the plane on his chest is different than Jet Combat's. Uh, so yeah, they, uh... Play their games, and it, just, it, it, wow. It's amazing. Like, Snipe, like, fights Forze, like, as he goes, uh, like, rocket form, or whatever like that, and just, or, and like, Gatling. uses rocket and Gatling, and it's just literally like a chasing game. And, as much as I love Forze, I have to admit, I love... I loved seeing him get his ass kicked. It was pretty fucking fun. It was great when they actually started doing like a vertical sliding up, like a sh like a shoot 'em up, like a, like the actual game. And just all the the gaming mu the music from the games and the gadgets and all the sounds are just all like great. I'm definitely buying a Zevius. Oh, I'm getting a Pac-Man gadget. No, and, and, and I'm getting a Family Stuck gadget. Said no one ever. I like how instead of just giving him a regular baseball glove, they actually molded it out of, like, armor. Is Cause, it? Because like, it, it looked like, like a real baseball glove to me. Oh, it, it's it, a it baseball! Looks like, it looks like a real one, but in all the scenes of it, it has, like, a glossy shine to it. No, oh, I okay. noticed that, too. It does look like it's made out of the same crap as the suit. I wonder, I wonder if, I wonder if uh, O's was on the Jaggers! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just give him a Jaguar uh, medal. <laughs> Your turn, Mr. Juster. But yeah, just, just cue my cue the video from my channel. Just the, the shot from JoJo. Oh, that's a baseball! Yeah, Ichi made this amazing video of just like using oh, all that's I a did baseball. was put gadget sounds. All to I it. did was add the sound of a gadget being. But inserted. it was fucking perfect. <laughs> like I laughed my ass off. You're so good at that. Yeah. So good. That's a critical strike. Brave did a critical strikeout on O's. Yeah, like, holy fuck. He, like, raised his... Uh, but not before and fucking throwing a ball right into the umpire Bugster's junk, apparently. Because I think Brave just found that funny. He's just like, oh, you, you, know what bu you know what bugs me, though, about the uh, riders that they picked? What mm. Bugsters you? It, oh. Yeah. What buggles you? Oh. Oh. Double has a form where he has a big stick. Yep. Why not have him be the baseball guy? I know, right? Just have him bat with the metal shaft. No, but I like to think. But that then like... I thought about it like this: O's has three medals, three strikes. Oh. 
Yeah. No, but I also like to think that, like, Edgy and his world travels was just like, yeah, I used to play professional baseball in America. <laughs> That's the lamest pretense ever. I mean, in one of the MLB uh, baseball teams, they actually have a Japanese pitcher. And There's he's, several. And he's fucking good. Japan loves baseball! Like, yeah. more than America does! That is correct. Jesus Christ. And I just love how Snipe, like, after, when he beats Forza, he has a score of 9,999,990. Not 99. And I don't, I don't think I completely get the joke, but when he's done, he lands and gives air quotes and says, Mission complete. I feel like I missed part of the joke. He fucked up and didn't go get that last nine points. That must be it. Yeah, like, he, he beat... Forze, but he didn't get the top high score, so he's sure. just like mission complete, I guess. And then we have, uh, and then we have X Eight just being running away like a little bitch, like, like Pac Man would do, and chasing him through, like doubles chasing him. And then he gets finds the power pellet, grabs the power pellet, which or apparently like, is called power cookie. Yeah, it's called the power Japan. cookie in Japan, which is interesting. And then just spots a blue ghost on Double's head. And I'm just like I was kind of expecting them to like warp his whole suit so that he flashed blue. I was kind of hoping for that instead, but that's good enough. Raven's reaction was perfect. He's like, "God damn it! Like I knew that was coming." Right? But <laughs> like I fucking knew it was gonna happen, but I was just kind of hoping it wasn't. And then we got the Paku critical strike, and literally just turns him into a giant Pac-Man. Just I don't know. Just eats double. Yeah, yeah I saw him do it, double. and I was like, "Is he just gonna turn into Pac-Man?" <laughs> yep. Yep. No. Fine, I'll smash. Like I don't think I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever mentioned it like on Cash Ranger, but like honestly, one of my favorite retro games of all time is Pac Man. Like I, I grew up playing it. Like whenever I went to an arcade, I love Pac Man. I made him in Smash Brothers. I have two amiibos of him, and I just I've always loved Pac Man. He's fucking cool. So loves design, loves little gloves. So. Speaking of glove, I love when Brave does his critical strike. How he, like, winds up the pitch and, like, lifts his leg up. Yeah. And then just, like, it's almost like he steps out of the episode for a sec just to, like, quickly dart his hand down to the slot to hit critical strike. And then puts it back up and finishes the pitch. Like, credit to the brave suit actor for that fucking, just lifting that leg up. That was Holding impressive. that pose. Yeah, that was impressive. <laughs> Holy and shit. Well, okay, it's a lot I easier to do that when you're not holding the giant metal cast that is right. the Eva leg thing. But what's, yeah. what's I mean, I mean, you know what I think happened? I think they just had Dan's actor get in the suit for a minute. And just <laughs> <laughs> no, but what's bullshit is like he throws the fucking critical strike pitch. Oz hits it with the bat, so but technically, the pit, but the, pit, but the but pitch the, is the, so hard that it just oh. sends all three of them flying into each other and just explode. Two rockets and then, busting up again, and then just game clear. And it was funny too because it was three of them because oh, it was three. So yeah, <laughs> god damn uh, it. Meanwhile, Poppy is like. Annoyingly poking the paralyzed gun Verizon Just collab. like I'm poking just it. sitting there like ah! I'm sitting there like I it's perf standing perfectly still. You could just like take the gadget out of it. Just take it out of it. No, you're just gonna poke at it and not and do anything. Scream at it. The screw it just goes ah. Finally, just set. That was actually funny. I finally, don't know why. finally sets it off and it just starts chasing her around for a minute. No, but watching her like acting like this, it just makes my theory more sound. It's just like. She's not going to be a common writer of her own free will. Like, there's no fucking way. Because she's not going to know what the fuck to do. Like, she used the special medal in one in episode 12, and what did it do? Just spun a Christmas dress and made her just sing a fucking Christmas song. That was it. <laughs> like, sure, she summoned a giant holographic knife and fork, but th th that's pretty much it. She just went Toriko for, like, a second. So, after they finally pull Ganbarizing out, uh, Exade uses it in the breaker for a Ganbarizing critical finish, and then it just gets sucked inside its own hologram, somehow. Mm -hmm. And starts spawning Hibiki for the next episode. Because whoever is Dr. Pac-Man pulls out the Taiko no Tatsujin gashet. Yep. Uh, for those who don't know, Taiko no Tatsujin is a game about drumming a taiko drum. It's a freaking rhythm game. Yup. Yup. 
I'm actually looking forward to seeing that because I enjoyed that game. I have played one of the Taiko no Tatsujin games on the PS2. I, I saw him in the Mario Kart game, which we talked about last time. Mar- yeah, he was on Mario Kart GP. I've seen arcade versions of that at various cons. He's cute, that's for sure. Cute it's not cute. He's so cute. But yeah, they, this they, was a fun special. I I thoroughly enjoyed it all the way through. Yeah, and uh, so episode three, which is going to be exclusive to the DVD when that comes out, uh, Genmu does a Gond Rising Critical Strike, which apparently summons a flying ring of all the riders. So you mean that thing where in Di- All Riders vs. Die Shocker where they just all rider yeah. kicked fucking Shadow Moon at the same time? By the way, this episode can go fuck itself because the preview for episode 2 hinted at us finding out who Dr. Pac Man was in this, and literally episode 2 ends with Genmu ripping off the mask and we don't see who it is. Nope. Yep, because it's blocking his own face with the fucking you Ico want, You want to find out who he is? Buy the DVD! We don't find out until episode 3, please! You dicks! Yep. Anyways, that's marketing. Alright, well, that Any, is our show for this week. Any closing thoughts? Um, yeah, it was really fucking cool in a game pack adventure gashet. Yeah, and I'm getting Xevious. Yep. Whoa. I will happily pose that gashet alongside my Pac-Man amiibo. And I will pose it next to my Bang Bang shooting. There you go. Noble, any closing thoughts? Um, it was an interesting special, to say the least. Um, I did see a spy shot thing a while back where it was all the, uh, x riders writers in their, in their respective dragon forms against Ryuki. So I don't know if that's going to be a thing for the, uh... Wait, including Laser? Uh, no, it was main three. Oh, okay. <laughs> And like, <gasps> so I'm not sure if that's going to be a thing for the next episode or not. Okay, well... It seems kind of weird for it to be part of the next episode when it seems like it's going to be heavily, like, Ibiki-related. Actually, it, sh- it might have laser in it because, like, when Genmu showed up, Hero was like, oh, Black x Oh, yeah, because he's in level 2 form still, Kyria it should be alive in this part of the timeline. Yeah, line. so... We'll see. Maybe. All right, so... Everyone who's listening, watching, thank you for joining us for another week. As always, you can find our primary source of hijinks at castranger.podbean.com. Oh, yeah. Uh, please make sure to follow our Radio Santa Cast Ranger Facebook page, where we post all kinds of funny memes and toka-related images on the regular. Follow me on Twitter at either Lytrid or Caster Pink. So. Uh, and you can also tweet at us at Ixy Studios. Yep. Uh, Noble, thank you for joining us for another week. Uh, hopefully I'm always glad to be on. Yep. Uh, next week, Gar should be back. Uh, and and hopefully, hopefully hopefully with the ghost movie subbed with him so we can watch it. Yeah. And hopefully Emmy will be here. Yep. Yay. We'll see you all next week. Bye, fuckers. Love you. This episode of Cast Ranger has been brought to you by the glorious donations of our cast patrons, Oliver Nelson, Joel Maroney, and Chris Laird. Thanks very much.